Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Strange Days True Crime, where we look at stories of solved and unsolved murders and disappearances. So sit back and enjoy. The Unsolved Dardeen Family Murders Russell William Dardeen and Joanne Sharp would welcome their baby boy, Russell Keith Dardeen, who was born on June 22nd of 1958. Russell, who went by his middle name Keith, would grow up and meet Ruby Elaine Cowling, who was born on August 10th of 1959. And like Keith, Ruby would also go by her middle name, Elaine. Keith and Elaine would eventually get married in August of 1979 in Albion, Illinois, and would have a son named Peter Dean Dardeen on July 5th of 1984. In 1986, Keith and Elaine would move just outside of Inna, Illinois, where they purchased a mobile home and rented some land from a farmer, where they would set their trailer in the woods. The Dardines would make this home for their two-year-old son and soon-to-be new baby, as Elaine was pregnant with the couple's second child. Elaine worked at an office supply store in Mount Vernon, while well, Keith had finished his job training and was a treatment plant operator. With the new baby coming, the couple decided to sell their trailer and move to a better area. The decision to move was not just due to the fact their family was growing, but there had been an increase of violence in the area. Keith was very protective of his family, and with there being 15 murders in the last two years, it was time to move. Both Elaine and Keith were active in the small Baptist church where Elaine played piano and Keith would sing. Keith was a very reliable employee, so when he didn't show up for his night shift on November 17th of 1987, his boss would try calling him and when no one answered the phone, he would call Keith's parents, which could not get a hold of Keith either. Keith's parents would then place a call to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department with their concerns, and they agreed to meet at Keith's home and bring a set of spare keys. When they arrived, they noticed Keith's car was missing and headed to the door to be met with silence. Police would then unlock the door, only to find a horrific sight upon entering the Dardeen home. Upon entering the home, police found the brutally beaten bodies of 30-year-old Elaine and her 3-year-old son Peter on the bed. Elaine was found bound with duct tape and gagged. The killer had placed their bodies on the bed and due to the violent attack, Elaine had gone into labor delivering a baby girl. The killer took no mercy with the newborn baby girl either. Just as the killer had done to Elaine and Peter, the life of the baby girl was taken as well. The baby would have been named Casey. The killer had used a baseball bat, which Keith had given to Peter as a birthday gift months before as the murder weapon. The killer had fractured Elaine's skull as well as Peter's, who also had several contusions and abrasions. Baby Casey was also beaten to death. The killer had made an attempt to clean the scene and had taken their time while in the Dardines' home. However, it didn't seem that robbery was a motive as there was a video camera, jewelry, and cash left in plain sight. Police also noticed the back door was unlocked and there was no sign of forced entry. The only thing missing from the Dardines' home was Keith. Keith was the prime suspect at this time, as his car was gone and so was he. So police set out on a search for Keith, as they believed he had murdered his family and then fled. The search efforts would come to a stop soon after. The next morning, on November 18th, hunters would come across a body in a wheat field not far from the Dardines' home. The body would be that of 29-year-old Keith, and it appeared that Keith had been murdered. Keith had three gunshot wounds, one to the skull, left cheek, and right side of his face, 
and not only had he been shot, but his genitals had also been mutilated. Police would later find Keith's car 11 miles away in Breton, where it had been parked outside of the police station. While back at the trailer, police noticed the inside was splattered with blood, which led them to believe that Keith had also been killed in the home. Investigators also found a small amount of marijuana, which Keith's parents suggested it had to have been left by the killers. Autopsies were done on the family, and they were able to determine who had died first and stated that they had all died within one to two hours of each other. Some 30 investigators were working on the case and had interviewed around 100 people, but the interviews turned up no leads in the case. As police began to dig into the family's life, they couldn't find much in the way of evidence pointing to a motive. There was no financial troubles, grudges, and no evidence that either Keith or Elaine were involved in extramarital affairs. Over time, the case of the brutal murders of the Dardine family would grow cold. Keith's mother would not let the case sit cold though. She was continually pressuring the investigators to solve the murders and collected 3,000 signatures as an attempt to get the Oprah Winfrey show to do a segment on the murders. But due to the horrific nature of the crime, the producers deemed the murders too brutal to air on daytime television. In 1998, America's Most Wanted would air a segment about the murders, but this never brought in any new leads or tips on the case. It wouldn't be until 2000 when a possible break in the case would come. Tommy Lynn Sells was arrested for the murders of 10-year-old Crystal Searles and 13-year-old Kaylin Harris when he had slit their throats. Once Tommy was arrested, he claimed to have killed another 70 people along with the Dardine family. Investigators confirmed Tommy was responsible for at least 22 murders, but was not linked to the murders of the Dardine family, despite his confession. Police could not link Tommy to the murders, and when given his statements, nothing was matching the evidence. Tommy had stated that when he first met Keith, it was at a truck stop, and the next time he stated it was at a pool hall where he claimed Keith had invited Tommy to his home for dinner and then a three-way with Elaine. Keith's mother stated her son was way too protective of his family to do such a thing. During the interviews with Tommy, investigators began to find him less reliable as his accounts of the murders and the positions of the bodies did not match up and it took him a while before he would finally get it right. However, Tommy still claimed he had murdered the Dardines and stated he was a transient, so there was no one looking for him and no evidence linking him to the murders. In 2014, Tommy Sells was executed. To this day, there have never been any arrests or charges laid for the murders of the Dardine family. But there are a few theories about the murders but none of them had real motive to back them up. The first is that at one point, Keith had refused to let a young woman in to use the phone and that she may have been involved. A second theory is that someone wanted Keith to sell drugs, but he refused and his family was therefore murdered, along with the possibility that Elaine could have had a stalker or someone from her past that she may have rejected and was then killed for the rejection. Of course, these are all just theories. With this case being unsolved for so many years, it begs the question of will the Dardine murders ever be solved? Well, that's it for this case. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you get notified when I upload a new video. You can also follow me on my Facebook page for more things true crime. Thanks so much and join me next time for more stories of these strange days we live in.